Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. What is our European cloud ambition? How do we realize our cloud ambition? And how does Helix Nebula contribute to this? Our ambition is to be the safe harbor in the world. We aim to be the world's leading trusted cloud region in Europe. Because we would like to create new jobs and we would like to avoid PRISM and the Patriot Act. There are a few issues, especially in the public sector, that we should think of. The first one is that we should look beyond our own borders, specifically in the public area. I was talking to a fireman the other day, and this fireman, he told me, I would like to become cloud active, Johan. How can you help me? But he also said, the cloud, I should be the only one who have access to this cloud, and it should not be further than two kilometers away from my fire department. Well, if you think and you have this kind of requirements, you will not come any step further. You should be able to look beyond your own business, beyond your own municipality, beyond your own province, or eventually beyond your country borders. Then, the second issue is that if we would like to start and kick off the cloud business in Europe, the suppliers should become active. We, from Atos, Canopy, but also the others, should become active. We have to produce for you what we call digital energy, infrastructure as a service. The European Cloud Partnership is supporting us and guiding us. Thierry Breton, my CEO, who is a member of the steering committee, he supports us and he supports me to produce this digital energy for you. The question then is, how do we produce and deliver this European digital energy? Ladies and gentlemen, there is some news. Uh, Marilyn was already referring to this. We are going to start a European marketplace for scientists. It is a marketplace uh, for publicly funded research institutes at one side, but at the other side, it's also meant for, uh, let's say, more commercial organizations. It could be a, a research and development uh, department from Shell or from Philips or NXP or whatever company. We will deliver from this marketplace infrastructure as a service, vCPU, vMemory, storage, to the scientific community. There will be competing services. It will not only be ourselves, but I see here my colleague from T-Systems. There will be colleagues from Cloud Sigma, which is a niche player, but there will be more parties into this NH6, and we all put our service catalogs in this marketplace. Demand parties, like CERN and ESA and also EMBL, they can buy our digital energy. They can, if they like, and if they need digital energy, for example, because they are lacking resources at a certain moment in time, they can hop on in November and they can hop off again in December. They can choose the best services in this marketplace for example, if they need an enormous amount of, mon uh, of machines to analyze research data, then they can even, because we are working in the federated model, by placing one order, getting, let's say, 50,000 virtual machines from these systems and 50,000 from Canopy, which is the Atos company, it's the brand for, uh, for the cloud business from Atos, 
They can buy 50,000 machines from virtual machines from Atos at the same time. So there will be no vendor lock-in. And if you start buying from such a marketplace, what happens then is that there are bigger economies of scale. It will be cheaper for the scientists to use and buy services from this marketplace. And so we can be competitive to the currently US-dominated markets. I'm proud of what we are offering here from Canopy because I can tell a, a, a long story about Canopy, but we have a, a data center at, Tin at Tenerife. It's a fully wind and sun-powered uh, data center, so it's very green, and we are offering even HPC, high-performance computers, to do modeling uh, for EMBL, for genome modeling and prototyping. But I'm pretty sure I'm not here to sell Canopy. I'm here to promote the marketplace. I'm pretty sure that Yuri de Lamar, who is here from T-Systems, that he has his own story about his marketplace, and he has his own offerings as well. So you can choose between us, and we are competing in this marketplace. There will be more than just infrastructure as a service. We are planning to offer platforms, but also services as of software as a service later on in 2014. And also we will open up the marketplace for other suppliers as long as they obey to the rules and to the legislation that we are uh, requiring in this marketplace. So the community, as uh, Marilyn was already showing, will grow eventually. More suppliers will attend this marketplace. Buying digital energy will become as normal as buying, for example, uh, water or electricity. It will be as normal as trading on the stock exchange. We heard stories yesterday that the G Cloud already is offering infrastructure as a service. So it's not new what we're doing, but we are building a real marketplace to do business in Europe now. Then the question is, does it work in the public sector? Because we're here specifically for the public sector. <coughs> I don't think it will work from the start in 2014. At least for the public sector. Why is that? I see two, let's say, business issues that we need to solve. The first one is the tendering issue. Once you would like to buy from a marketplace, but you exceed, let's say, a limit of 200k euros, you need to start in the public sector a tendering procedure most of the times. And that takes time, two to three months. And I just explained when ASA, for example, uh, is lacking resources and they would like to buy from this marketplace, it's just a few mouse clicks away. And this doesn't match very well, the two to three months tendering period and the few mouse clicks. How can you overcome this tendering issue? Well, the first thing could be that we, in the public sector, that we select uh, a few preferred marketplaces, clouds, where you can buy from. That's at, at, at least how they did it in the UK. There, the public bodies are allowed to buy from their marketplace. Another thing that could help, specifically in the, in, the, in the area of scientists, is that they get, instead of money to buy their own hardware, is that they get, let's say, OPEX points to be spent at certain marketplaces. So they will not buy their own equipment, but they will start using the cloud. I think that's another possibility to overcome at least this hurdle. The second hurdle that we should overcome is a business is, is, is another issue, it's, it's a border issue. If a scientist who wants data center cap capacity um, wants it just for him alone, not further than two, two kilometers away, that's not going to work. 
think bigger. Allow scientists to buy in Europe, or at least in a yeah, Schengen-like area, if, if Europe is a step too far, but allow them to buy elsewhere in Europe. <clears throat> that will help. So please overcome the tendering and the bordering issue. Allow to buy services instantly from European certified clouds. And I hope that scientists will start buying, and I'm convinced that they will do next year in January from us. Thank you very much.